phones and turn your attention to the Lord. As Edna plays a little music, uh, let your heart be ready to receive all that God has for you today. Amen. here today. She drove down to uh, my son's house in Virginia to pick up my son and son-in-law and daughter from Colorado were out to visit. Uh, any chance for her to go down and see her grandkids, uh, she will take advantage of that and so she is blessed to be with the, the kids that are down there. Amen. Praise God. So I will do the announcements today in our giving. If you would like to, uh, there's a plate in the back for those who would like to give that way. And we also use Cash App. So if you want to use Cash App, it's a, it's a very convenient way. It's Community Baptist Norwalk. Uh, make sure you make sure put Norwalk because there's Community Baptists other places. And, uh, or you can put hashtag, or pardon me, dollar sign CBC Norwalk. Uh, that will work also for the Cash App. Continue if you want to mark something for a person to person. Uh, mark that each month we give food or money to them. They uh, are a wonderful organization that uh, meets the need of the people in Norwalk. Hallelujah. Uh, prayer meeting on Monday. We still do it by phone, a group uh, number. We do it as a, uh, a phone call. We link everybody in. And you can text me a prayer concern or let me know that you want to be called up. Uh, for that prayer meeting, my number is 203-984-0367. That's 203-984-0367. You can text the uh, prayer requests or ask to be part of it. This week on Thursday, uh, there is the National Day of Prayer. And all the churches this year, we're going to meet together at Parkway at 7 o'clock uh, for a group prayer for the National Day of Prayer. So uh, mark your calendars for that on Thursday. Uh, next service, if we uh, want to come, come, invite somebody. Reach out and ask your neighbor or your friend or even your not-so-friendly neighbor uh, to come out and be blessed. Or see us live on Facebook. And then we are also a little bit later on YouTube, Reverend Gregory Saunders. So those are all ways that you can be a part of this service. Uh, other, other thing that I just wanted to mention is this week 
Does anybody know what May 5th is? Cinco de Mayo. Mayo. Okay. Well, guess what? It's something more important than that. I just looked it up, and this church has a birthday on May 5th. So our birthday, the church birthday, is 163 years old. So when we hit 150, we had a big celebration. So that, I said, well, how long ago? I just, I'm, why it just started getting my head? So I looked it up, and it said that May 5th, you know, uh, 163 years ago, it started in South Norwalk, and I was talking to Edna about that, and that it came over here. She says, 163, I'm not that old. And I said, you better not be. I don't know. But praise God, uh, we are from that historic church and came over here. Praise God. So over 1937, we established here. So praise God for all that he has done and all that he will be doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's start with our first hymn. We open up to 376. 376. And right there on the roadway, they had just tarred the road. 
And I don't know about you, but when you're a little kid, you see the little bubbling car and you kind of stick a stick in it and play with it. So he stuck a stick in it, was playing around with the tar. And he flipped it and a little spot went on his shirt. So he tried to wipe it off with his hand and then he wiped that off and he said, oh no. And the next thing you know, there was tar all over this little kid. Uh-oh. All of a sudden, Mom called. Johnny? Johnny, where are you? Jonathan Michael? Oh, you know you're in trouble when it gives you your full name. And he poked his head around the corner, all covered with the tar. She put her hands on her hips and she looked at it and says, Johnny, you know, it would probably be easier to have another one than to clean you up. Well, let's get going. We're going to church. Isn't it amazing that God looks at us sometimes when we're all messed up, lost in sin, and it would be probably a lot easier to have another one than to clean us up. But thank God that he cleans us up. Amen. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Praise God. Hallelujah today. Just wanted to share that. Hallelujah. I'm not preaching yet. Praise God. Prayer time. Anybody have a testimony? What has God done for you? Yes. Um, on Tuesday, my daughter came back to us from the DR, and she brought her husband, safe and sound. He's adjusting. Um, I got to meet him actually Friday night because with work and everything, he gets exhausted. Um, we took him out to dinner, and you know we got to talking. Uh, yesterday was Mandy's birthday, so we went over there, so I introduced him to some of my family. And, you know, just with the kids and everything, I just, I'm enjoying so far, you know, the spring and the family. Um, it's, it's hard for someone who comes from somewhere to come to a different place and not understand anything. The language is not the issue. He speaks perfect English. Uh, food is something that is quite, you know, it's... Yeah. Grabbing the nuts. <laughs> uh, but thank God we went to my, my sister's and, you know, he was able to have some food that he's somewhat familiar with. Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, it's, you know, different food, but, you know, some of the spices. Um, but I had a good time. And, um, and here comes the prayer. Um, my mom was supposed to be there. She did some of the cooking, but she hasn't been feeling well. So she, they're keeping her at the hospital for a couple of days just to watch her. She, I think she's more paranoid than anything, but... They just want to keep a close eye on her, so prayers for her on that. Um, prayers for this couple, um, you know, that they can start building, and, you know, their own little empire, and you know, uh, and, you know, and take care of things. Um, also, the, just as a reminder, tonight, uh, what's it? After church, we have that uh, fellowship. I got some brownies. But come down and, and try some. I didn't make them. They're from BJ's. I won't lie about it, but they look great. So please come down afterwards and uh, try one. Amen. That's it. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, I understand. Last week I wasn't able to uh, be down there for fellowship time very much, but uh, there's so a, what's your name on it. Yeah, it's something, uh, something we can start doing again. Praise God. Fellowship is, is wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. Hope to see those your family in church one of these days. I'm hoping so too. Amen. Other testimonies. We have a testimony? Yes. Um, again, I'm going to use my niece, Barbara Lewis, as my testimony and prayer. She um, is home and she did not expect to get out of rehab for a long time, but she is home. Hallelujah. Talked to her yesterday. So she thanked her for all the prayer she's having, and she feels that it's a big deal thing she's done. She's really doing good also. Amen. But um, the fact that she's home already, I think everybody is surprised in a way when it was going to be such a long haul. She's still on dialysis, but they found a place like about 20 minutes away from yeah. where she lives. That she'll be going to be coming to. Amen. But she is doing so much better, and 
it's only her feet are swollen yet from the flu. So she says, eventually I'll get my shoes on. Amen. <laughs> her attitude is very good. Hey, so, oh, so, Jimmy, you want to hear? Yeah, uh, my mom's planning on uh, coming home Tuesday. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. I was just up this past week to see her, and she was hoping to get out. She says, no, they don't do anything on the weekend, but maybe after the weekend they can spring me from here. Hallelujah. She'll be, she'll be home for Mother's Day and for the grand, granddaughter's wedding. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Kathy, got an update on your dad? He's going to be coming home today. Coming home today. Praise God. He's been in the hospital. So... Ralph, praise God. Butch? Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't, well, I shared with the prayer group last week that the prayer group was the one that was praying about the prayer group. So uh, sometimes I had to go up there and I'll go to the prayer group and 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 go to the prayer group. Amen. And my nephew is supposed to start with a job on Monday also, this coming Monday. Uh, so praying that he will get that job and get it all going. So he's up in Maine. Praise God. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Hallelujah. God provides. Yes. Anybody else have a prayer a testimony? Prayer requests. Edna? And you are doing so much better. Hallelujah. We are. One more. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Yes. Healing process is sometimes a little longer than yeah. Sometimes it's a little longer than we want. Amen. 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 We'll keep. Amen. Keep praying for him. Yes. My blood pressure, good day, better day, but we're still in that process of waiting to see how it all works out. Again, just want to thank the Lord for His presence because I feel His presence in my life constantly. Just thank the Lord for His presence. Amen. Praise God. Anything else? Well, we continue to pray about the war in Ukraine and that it would be over soon. Some people will get something in their right mind and instead of shooting, talking and getting things done. Uh, it's not the way to do business. Uh, there's a lot of people that are hurting and a lot of uh, loss of life and loss of uh, things and displacement of people. Uh, we need to keep, keep them in prayer. When it all started, it's easy to pray, uh, you know, until they are back, but we kind of forget easily. So keep them in prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, how you have continued to bless in each one of us, Lord God. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for the healings. We thank you for the provision. We thank you for how individuals have jobs to go to, Lord God, and homes with a roof over our heads, Lord God. 
We thank you, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are our healer. You are our deliverer. You are our God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you that there are those who are going to the doctor and trying to get information and results, Lord God. Those who are going through uh, different treatments, Lord God, we pray that the treatments would continue to have the effect of a healing. But Lord God, you are the great physician. So for all of these, Lord God, who are going forth and needing a healing touch, Lord God, we pray that you would be with them, that you would minister to them, and they would know without a doubt that you are in their lives. As Rick has said, Lord God, that we can sense your presence, Lord God, in our lives. Each and every day, Lord God, help us never forget all that you have done for us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord God, that we are able to pray for people across the country and across the world, Lord God. And without a doubt, do you hear our prayers? And Lord God, we pray that you would continue to answer them, Lord God. Meet the needs of those who are in storms and troubles, Lord God, across this world, Lord God. Touch the missionaries' hearts, Lord God, that are trying to bring forth your word. Lord, we pray that you would continue to help us with the struggles that we have, Lord God, and continue to go to you and know that you are God who hears and answers our prayers. We pray for this church, and we thank you that we can celebrate another birthday, Lord God. And Lord God, we pray that we would be used by you in this town, Lord God, to bring forth the gospel message, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Church of Covenant is in the back of your hymnal. And Chris is going to come and, and lead us in that. So if you just open up to the back page there for the Church Covenant. And just for your uh, benefit, I was at a communion service not too long ago, and he says, "Well, I was served the cup, but I wasn't did not receive the bread." Well, there's two layers. So the first layer, you pull it back, and it's the bread, and the, the second is the cup. So just if you have it, praise God. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> on Union Sunday, we read the church covenant, which you will find on the inside of the back cover of your info. The first and last paragraph will be read together. The middle responsible. Can you stand with me, please? Having been led by the Spirit of God to profess our faith in Jesus Christ, and having been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do now solemnly and joyfully affirm our covenant with God and with each other. We pledge to serve Christ in the fellowship of this congregation. We shall endeavor to love one another, to remember one another in prayer, to share each other's joys, and to sustain each other in times of distress. We aspire to be a fellowship of the concerned, where the lost may find Jesus Christ, sinners may find pardon, seekers may find meaning for their lives, and where all who come may find welcome. We shall strive to be responsible church members through faithful attendance, study, and giving. We shall seek to be obedient to Christ in our daily living, using the Holy Bible as our guide. Within our homes, in our labor, and while at leisure, we shall strive for attitudes and actions which will reflect God's Spirit working through us. We further resolve to accept our responsibilities as Christian citizens. Believing that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, we shall endeavor to avoid experiences and habits that defile the body and hinder our witness. We are called to membership in the church. It is a call to worship in the world. We dedicate ourselves anew as the servants of the Lord of all life. As we pledge our support to the work of our missionaries 
to rock the world, we commit ourselves to the mission to which God calls us. Acknowledging our human frailties and ever seeking forgiveness and uplifting, we profess our need of the Holy Spirit and commit our lives to Jesus Christ and through Him to the care, the judgment, and deliverance, and the mercy of Almighty God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I would like to do a, a solo for you before I start my message today. Uh, praise God. Through 21. First Peter, and if you don't know where it is, it's near the end. So if you go all the way to the end, find Revelation and start working your way back, it's not too far. First Peter. When you find it, say amen. Uh oh. Don't hear any amens. I know it's easy on the phone. Hallelujah. I do that. Praise God. But in 1 Peter, verse 17, it says thus, If any address as father, the one who uh, imperfectly judges us, according to each one's works, and conducts ourselves with fear at the time that we are here on earth, knowing that we are not redeemed by perishable silver or gold, or through the fruit, <laughs> ways of life to inherit. He says, but by the precious blood of the Lamb, unblemished, spotless, the blood of Christ. Now, if you mark it in your uh, feudal ways, we are saved by the blood of the Lamb, the precious blood of the Lamb. The spotless blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. 
You know, we take a look at the world and we have discovered through the many, many centuries that the blood has always been something that they that were significant with life. Life and blood. It was for some reason, and we look today and we understand that there's something special about blood. In many, many years past, they would actually say, well, the blood inside of you is bad, so we're going to cut you and let out some of the bad blood so that the body can make new blood that's good. Well, that really didn't make any sense, but they used to do that. Uh, there was many things that they did, and then they, they finally figured out that maybe if somebody loses blood, that they can get somebody else's blood and transfuse it in. Now, they didn't know why it worked at some times and why it didn't work at other times, but they didn't know anything about blood types and different things. They also, we've seen that there's different types of things. Do you realize what the blood actually does for us? It is a wondrous thing. It takes food from our digestive system. It takes it to every cell in your body to give it the energy to live. It takes oxygen from our lungs to every cell in our body so that it can go through that life process. It has the ability to fight diseases. The white blood cells fight infections. But you see, sometimes the blood doesn't do what it's supposed to do and we get too many white blood cells and it's a blood cancer and we have a problem that kills off the red blood cells which take the oxygen. So they found that sometimes what they need to do is they need to say, well, where is the blood produced? Well, the blood is produced in the, the marrow and they do a, a marrow transplant. But what they have to do is they have to radiate and kill everything in there to put in the new marrow. Spiritual speaking, the new blood that we need to get is a transfusion from Jesus Christ. We need his blood. His blood is applied to our lives. And it is that that makes the difference in our lives. It fights the infection of sin in our lives. It brings all that we need to us through the spiritual gift. We see through all the way from all the way back into Genesis. In Genesis chapter 3, we see that man had a problem. And it's called sin. And that Eve had a problem. She listened to the devil. And what happened is that we need to know that this is an ongoing process, that Satan is a liar and a deceiver from the pit of hell and trying to get us to turn away from God. But you see, it says here in Genesis chapter 3, Now the man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living things. And the Lord made garments of skins for Adam and his wife and clothed them. You see, this is the very first time that there was a sacrificial killing of an animal. There was a shedding of blood because of the sin of man. The man and the woman sinned. And there was a sacrificial death. You know, you don't get the skins off of an animal <laughs> without killing it. It doesn't say, oh, I'll just bar borrow your skin. Hello? You all know that. So when God sacrificed the animals to make the clothes for Adam and Eve, it was the first sacrifice, the first shedding of blood because of what? Because of sin. We see later on as they are out of the garden, Adam and Eve have two kids, Cain and Abel. Cain brings an offering to God of fruit and the first of the crops that he raised. But Abel was a, the one that was a shepherd, and he brought the yearlings, the, the first fruit of the sheep that he had, and offered it as a sacrifice. And God was approving to Abel for that sacrifice, but he wasn't so happy with Cain. And Cain got upset about it. And as we all know, he kills his brother. You see, all the way through, we see that there is a problem of sin entering into this world. All the way through, all the way back, the sin of man. The whole world was pretty much in sin except for Noah. And God approached him and told him to build an ark. What? I don't know about you, but you know, 
seems like a little awesome that there not been any rain and everything else. And he said, well, there's going to be a flood. And, you know, I, how am I going to get this thing built within, you know, and his sons helped him. And it still took over 100 years. Had to be patient. Had to be patient. The flood came. You see, God always has an ark of salvation. He has a way out. He has a, a promise that he keeps. And the salvation was in that ark. And after they came out, it says that they built an altar and they sacrificed animals. And at that point, there was a bow in the sky. And God said, this is my promise that I will never flood the earth again. We see it again and again. And if we ever see it, I don't know about you, but every time I see the miracle of a rainbow, it's like, wow, I remember that it's a promise. There it is again, a promise. There it is again, a promise. God has promised us that he would save us. Time goes on. As they looked at it, we see another big time of sacrifice that the our early church was before it was even the church, but it was followers of God. It was when the children of Israel were in Egypt when the children of Israel were in Egypt and it was time to go, the last thing that he did is he set up a time of sacrifice. Each family sacrificed the lamb and they applied the, the blood of the lamb to the doorposts, to the part that goes over the doorpost, the head of the thing, all around the door. The blood of the lamb was applied. Why? Because they were told to. Why? Because the death angel was coming. The spiritual death of our lives. The sin of our lives. We were covered by the blood of the lamb. And the death angel came and the firstborn of everything in Egypt was killed. Except where the children of Israel were obedient to God and had sacrificed them to the blood of the lamb produced a saving grace, a saving power. We need to look as believers, as it says in 1 Peter, it's not about silver and gold, the futile ways of this world, the things that we think we inherit from uh, mother or father, sister or brother. It's not, you know, when we all get to heaven, you know, what a day of rejoicing it will be because daddy did this or that. No. You know, it's not your brother, not your sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. You see, we all are individuals. We are all called by God. It is his saving grace. It is his shed blood that we look at. I want you to look back in First Peter again. I want you to look in verse 18. Knowing that we have been redeemed. Redeemed. What does that word redeemed mean? Redeemed means bought back. Redeemed means that you, somebody else had to pay the price for me. Redeemed means that he loved us so much. We can't redeem ourselves. It's just what we see here. But the precious blood of the Lamb, the unblemished blood of the Lamb, what John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God that take us away the sins of the world. We see in verse 20 it says, For before the foundation of the world has appeared that the last times for the sake of you. This was God's plan. That God would send his son, that he would raise him up from the dead and be glorified. This is our faith. This is our hope in trust in God that there is a way out of this. You know, I, I really was preparing this message and, and the Lord put it on my heart and said this, there's not enough preaching about the blood. You know, people get kind of, oh, that's gory, it's this and that. But this is part of our history. This is part of the reality that the price that was paid was the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that he was beaten for our transgressions and wounded for our iniquities. 
He took the stripes upon his back. He went to the cross, bleeding already, and was crucified. The blood was shed outside of the camp. Why? For us. You see, we need to know that this is the plan, that we need to be reborn, re redeemed, bought back for a price. The old story of the little boy, Bobby, who built a boat. He built a boat and he carved his initials in the bottom of the boat. And he was playing with the boat and he lost the boat. And the boat went floating down the stream. He was heartbroken. That was his boat. This is what he had made. Oh. And then one day he was in town and he saw his boat in the second hand shop window. And he walked into the man and he says, that's my boat. He says, that's not your boat. It's my boat. I bought it. He says, look at the bottom of it. My initials are carved in the bottom of it. He says, I'm sorry. It's not your boat anymore. So the little boy went home and broke his piggy bank and brought in all the money. He says, this is all that I have, and I give it to you. I want my boat back. And the man says, okay, and he gave him the boat. And the little boy hugged that boat, and he walked out, and he says, oh, I love you because I made you, and I love you because I bought you back. Isn't it so true that God loves us so much? That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That Jesus Christ was before he was the word, became flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the word, it says, and the word dwelt among us. You see, he loved us so much that he came. Even knowing what he was going to go through, even knowing what he had to do, because he knew that it had to be paid. The price had to be paid. The blood that was spent and shed in all the sacrifices before them. Hundreds and hundreds of lambs and goats and all the things that had been shed before could match up with the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. We are redeemed by His precious blood, the blood of the Lamb, the unblemished, spotless Lamb of God. Christ Jesus. We need to know that we are in need of being redeemed, being bought back with a price. We also need to take a look here, if you look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 through 21, it says this, For it was the Father's good pleasure that for all the fullness he dwelled in him, and through him he reconciled all things to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having been made peace through the blood of the cross. We've been reconciled. It's like a term that if you are a, a bookkeeper, you have all your debts, all your income, and puts it together, and it has to all balance out. Well, there's a song that says, I had a debt I couldn't pay. He paid a debt he didn't owe. When Jesus went to the cross, he paid the debt for me and for you. The ledger was made full. We were reconciled. We were brought back in spite of all of these things through the blood of the cross. We were reconciled. We are brought back. And the price that was paid, Christ paid it all on the cross. On that day, we look at it and we see before the Good Friday services, we talk about it all the time, of the words that Christ spoke. But do we remember all the time? Is it enough time that we pray in church and sing songs like the old rugged cross? Do we remember what he did? That when he was nailed to the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Church, there are times when we do know what we do, and we fall away, we fall away, we move away from what God has planned for us. 
The list on this side of the ledger, the debt that we owe gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Jesus says, I've paid it all. I've paid it all. It's reconciled. It's all mathematically figured out. I've paid your debt willingly. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's an amazing thing. You know, I've been into a store many times and I've seen people go up to the cash out store and they, they put the food that they need and it goes through. And you look at the money in your hand and you look at the bill at the end and they say, that doesn't add up so well. I really don't need that cake. I'll put that back. And, well, I'll, I'll put this. I can get this later. I, I don't need this. And, but sometimes somebody comes up and says, put it back on the thing. I'll pay the rest. Isn't it amazing that Christ does that for us? That even when we are so wretched and sinful, he says, I'll make up the difference. You will be reconciled. You will be bought back. This things that we have, the imbalance that we have. It says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, but God demonstrates his love towards us that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more having been justified by his blood. You might underline it in your, in your Bibles. We are not justified just because, ah, you know, I, I don't care. No. There was a price to be paid and it had to be paid. It had to be paid. We are justified because of his blood. We are saved from the wrath of God because of his blood. The blood that Jesus shed, we just sang, I just sang it, it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain, but it flows to the deepest valley. And sometimes in our lives, we get into a sinful situation and we know, oh God, help me. I don't know about you, but there are all of us at times that our faith is challenged and he wants us to be justified. And we are not justified by our works. Not by our act. Well, I, I'm a pastor. Oh, I, I sing in the choir. Oh, I, I give my, my tithe to the church. I do this, I do... That's great. That's good. But it's nothing that justifies, no, nothing that brings us to the point, nothing that says, just as if you hadn't sinned. Justified means just that. It means us us coming to a point where God wipes it away and he cleans it out so much just as if I had not sinned. You know, there's an old, old thing that says, you know, gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone. Now my soul is free and in my heart's a song buried in the deepest sea. Yes, that's good enough for me. I shall live eternally, praise God. My sins are gone, 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 gone. You know, they are buried in the deepest seas and God puts up a sign and says, no fishing. Don't try to drum it up. Don't try to go down and see those things. It's gone. It's justified through faith in Jesus Christ and his shed blood. It says there right there, we are justified by his blood. Not by what we do. And we are saved from the wrath of God. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Therefore, Jesus suffered outside the gate that he might be sanctified the people. Sanctified the people by his own blood. We are sanctified. We are made holy. We are made separate because of his shed blood. You can take a look at a, a dish or whatever. It's special when it's sanctified. It's set apart. It's only for special uses. Well, guess what? When we get saved, God sanctifies us. God sets us apart to serve him. That we might be sanctified through his shed blood. You see, he was sacrificed outside of the gate. He was sacrificed on Calvary. 
And you know what happened on that day? Many times we don't talk about it enough. That when he finally gave his, his, his last breath, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He breathed. And then he died. The very curtain that was in the temple that separated the Holy of Holies from the next thing outside, the place when only priests could enter in, was ripped from top to bottom. It was so thick that not even horses of teams could rip that thing apart. But yet God from heaven, when Jesus was sacrificed, he ripped it apart and let us enter into the holies of holies and that the sacrifices that needed to be made were not needed to be made again because he was the spotless lamb of God that took away the sins of the world once and for all. And as we look at this time of, of communion, we celebrate it again, the time of this sacrifice, of what he has done for us, how our sins have been washed away, how we've been set apart for service, we've been sanctified. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. But if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Church, many times we take a look and we say, oh well, if we walk in the light with him, we have fellowship with him, oh, everything's good. But it says, the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us. We forget about the fact that we need the blood of Jesus. We need a transfusion. What we have is diseased and problematic and causing us all kinds of things that don't work. We need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Now, a lot of people look at that and say, well, let me see, when I get a cut or something else and it stains my clothes, how can blood be washed away and be washed in the blood of the land? How can our garments, you know, they'll be scarlet, right? That's not what the blood is? It, no. It's not talking about that. It's talking about the infection of sin in our lives. If we say that we have no sin, verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just. Let me say it one more time. If we confess our sin, turn away from it, he is faithful and just. There is no other way. There is no other cure from this disease that we should call sin. We need to know that we're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are we walking daily with the Savior's hand? Are we washed in the blood of the Lamb? You see, we need to know that we are in need of the power of the blood of the Lamb. There is no other way. Again, let me just say it to you this way. There was a story that is told of, of a man who had a son. And the world had a disease that was killing people. They could sound familiar with all the things with COVID there now. But this disease was ravaging the world even worse. And that everybody who got it died. And they were checking everybody's blood. And they found that there was just one, just one, that he had something in his blood that would get rid of, wash away that disease. So they went to the father and they said, your son has something special about his blood. If he gives his blood, he can wash away this disease of the world. But he has to give it all. It would kill him. The father says, I will give my son. And the son said, I will give myself, Father. And he said, when the people receive this, they should celebrate. They should remember what my son has done. And the first year, everybody says, oh, it's great to remember. And after a while, it just was another day off and another day. Well, what are we celebrating? I don't know. 
don't have to work, whatever. And the father was all up in arms. Don't they remember what my son did? Well, that's a nice story for us to look at as a thing, but the sin of the world is the disease. And the father was God the father, and he gave his only begotten son that we should be cured from this disease called sin. Amazing how God loved us so much. I've got four sons, and I don't, wouldn't give any of them up. I have two son-in-laws, and I wouldn't even give them up. For God so loved the very world that he gave his only begotten son. To go to the cross, to suffer and die. Do we really look at it that we need that wondrous, transformational blood? To number one, redeem us. The precious blood of the Lamb. To reconcile us, well, balance out what we owe. Reconcile us back to God. Bring us peace through his blood on the cross. To be reconciled. To be justified. That just as if we hadn't sinned at all. Justified by his blood. And this is the part that we need to all look at. So that we might be sanctified through his blood. Are we set apart holy? The Bible says, be ye holy for God is holy. Lord, I, I, I can't live that kind of life. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be enabled. By staying in fellowship, by walking in the light, not going into the darkness. By admitting our faults, we walk in the light as he is in the light. If we confess our sins, it's not about just confessing our sins, but receiving the washing of our sins and what God has done for us. Do you remember what he has done for you? If you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you have drifted away from him, and don't remember what he did for you. It's time for us to turn back to him. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you made a way that when Abraham took Isaac to the mountain and you asked him to sacrifice his very only son, he was willing, but you didn't make him sacrifice his only son. There was a ram that was caught in the thicket that you could make that sacrifice for sin. And that you showed your love for God, that you were willing. But Lord God, we thank you that you were willing to sacrifice your only begotten son on the cross of Calvary. But by the very sins of the world to make atonement, to redeem us, to reconcile us, to justify us, to sanctify us and wash us white as snow from all of the sins that we have. We thank you, Lord God, that you remove that cancerous disease called sin. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, we know, is the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So right here and right now, before we go to the communion service, we examine ourselves as pitiful as we are, we confess our faults and turn to you to be washed in the fountain that we might be cleansed and made every bit whole. 
We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Open up your hymn books, please. To 299. Sing the first verse. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like going to be betrayed, you explain to your disciples that that Passover meal that they had just had, the history lesson that they remembered about what God did and how the death angel passed over because of the blood of the Lamb, you explain to them something even more important that night. At the end of the meal, you took the bread and you broke it and you distributed it to your disciples and you told them that this was your body, which was broken for them. Feed on him in faith, believing. They didn't know what lie ahead. They didn't know what he was even talking about, but they were obedient. And they received it, that his body would be broken for them. And they, they would do this in remembrance of him until he comes again. Because he lives. So Lord God, we take this emblem of your broken body. And yet we do it again in remembrance of you. And all that you did for us. Until you come again. Receive the bread. Sing the second verse of Amazing Grace. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour they had already asked at the very beginning of that meal to bless the cup and he said to them this is the cup of the new covenant of my shed blood and we know that it says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin this new covenant is the final covenant the promise of God that take us away the sins of the world. They did not what, know what lie ahead. But Jesus said, drink ye all of this. All of you should receive this new promise, this new covenant that man breaks, but God will never break. This covenant, this promise, this shed blood, once and for all, Lord, we remember what you've done. You've redeemed us. You've reconciled us. You've justified us. And you've set us apart and sanctified us by your shed blood. So we do this for remembrance of you until you come again. Receive the cup. Stand together and if you want, you can take somebody by the hand and sing the last verse. Amazing grace. When we bend there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first Jesus, who 
shed his blood for us, for our pardon, for our strength, for our eternal life. We thank you and we praise you and we will never forget all that you have done for us. In Jesus' name, and the people of God said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Uh -huh.